The question isn't how much can you make in the gig economy, it's how much do you want to make in the gig economy. In light of that better question, I'm going to show you this graph and it's going to highlight my earnings over the last five years doing gig work. What this graph demonstrates is that the techniques that I've learned are working. Now, you can also learn these techniques and apply them to yourself, and that way you can experience this type of success as well. So as you can clearly see here, the pay hasn't really increased over the last several years, but what you are noticing is the miles have gone way down on my car, so that means my car is going to last much longer, allowing me to make money well into the future. I do this part-time a couple days per week during the weekdays, so can you imagine just how much more you can make than I do if you're out there doing it during peak meal times, weekends? The sky's the limit. So right off the bat, you'll notice, look at those high miles starting off, 25,000 miles, 13,000 miles. Those were the days when I was doing rideshare. After that, I focused on food delivery and grocery shopping. And so you can see a corresponding decrease in miles. You'll notice that my earnings remain steady during this whole time. So what that tells me is I thought I was doing rideshare properly, but obviously I wasn't because with that many miles, I really should have made a ton more pay. But that just wasn't the case. Where I really honed my skills was afterwards doing food delivery and grocery shopping. So my takeaway from this last year, you notice that increase in miles, about a thousand miles. I think what this is is the orders seemed to be slow for several months, and I was taking a lot more orders. I didn't want to take the chance of not making any money, and so I basically took a lot of orders that came up on Grubhub and Uber Eats. And I did notice they were a lot of high mileage deliveries, and then the tips tended to be a little bit lower. And the main reason that I did this, again, I want to have a goal and make money at least $100 every day I'm out. And it was starting off really slow and I was fearful, what if I'm not going to make any money? And so I lowered my criteria and took these orders as they came in. Looking back, I don't regret it. Yeah, I drove another thousand miles than last year, but the pay ended up working out about the same. The very first top technique to making all you can in the gig economy is great customer service. That's why we're here. We are serving the customer. The customer ultimately is paying that app company, they're paying the restaurant, and they're making our paycheck as well. So I want to do everything possible to help the customer. Now, one thing that I'll do is a few minutes before delivering, I'll let them know I'm on my way. And I'll say thank you and ask them for feedback later. And what this does, two things. They either have hot food or they have groceries they're expecting. I want to have a smooth handoff, whether that's handing them at the door or just taking a picture and uh, doing the contactless delivery. Next, I want those good reviews. When you ask for reviews and you bend over backwards to help the customer, you're going to build up a huge bank of good reviews. And then inevitably, someone is going to give you a low rating, accuse you of theft, something like that. So when you have that one small bad incident, you want it to be offset by a massive bunch of good reviews. And this is going to protect you from getting deactivated. The next instance when I'm going to contact the customer is if anything is holding up that order. If the restaurant's running late, if they're out of an item, doing grocery shopping, if there's something not there, I want to contact the customer, let them know what's going on, and then ask them for a substitute or if there's something else they would like. The next aspect of great customer service, I really don't care where my pay comes from, but I want to be paid fairly for my work. And so when you get an offer, you get that combined income from the gig app and then that potential tip from the customer. And I want to always put the good effort in with the customer anyway, and I'll be rewarded with a tip. Up next, here's a quick breakdown of all the orders that I did by each company, total orders and the pay. And you can see the breakdown there. Multi-apping is the second secret in really doing well in the gig economy. You can tell from this information that I currently work for four different companies. And just a brief highlight, if you only work for one company, that's great. You may make a lot of money, but what happens when something goes wrong, if there's a glitch or a customer accuses you of something? 
What if you get deactivated? Now you have no income. So working for other companies gives you some flexibility to be able to keep earning money on another app. And then also, each industry can be busy and slow at different times. Food delivery might be slow, grocery shopping might be busier, or one company within those industries may be slow or busy. And this analogy applies to all aspects of gig work. The third way to make a lot of money in the gig economy, select profitable orders. Your vehicle is a tool to help you make money. You need to use your vehicle wisely or you're gonna risk going out of business. Do you know your time is just as valuable? If you select low paying orders, it's just basically impossible to make more. So when it comes to tips, I've done several low tip or no tip orders, and I would say rarely do they ever increase a tip, whether that's in the app or in cash. So rest assured that offer you see up front, that is all you can depend on, and most likely that's all you're gonna earn. So this means that I'm compelled to make that decision and know if an order is profitable right from the beginning when it's offered, looking at pay and miles. Now I am doing an experiment on Uber Eats where I'm accepting every single order. And I wanna get my acceptance rate to 100% and just see if I'm rewarded for my selflessness to Uber Eats with high paying orders. So more to come on that in the future. There are many important aspects that go into profit and loss, income and expenses. What I'm gonna do is link a playlist in the video description, so check that out later. And I've made several annual earnings reviews as well as quarterly this last year where I talk about all the variety of aspects of income and expenses. What do those categories mean and what's included in there? I'm not gonna do that today in this video, but do check those out. I will add there are tax deductible fees that you are charged for using every single one of these apps that you do deduct from your taxes. That's something that I didn't mention before. John from Right Up State, thank you for pointing that out. Work is hard, that's why we get paid. Have you ever wondered how you can make this an enjoyable experience, working, helping the customers, and earning money? I've discovered habits that every successful gig economy driver has, so I'm going to share that with you in this next video. But first, I think you can see after watching this video, seeing the lessons that I've shared with you today, all of this is well within your control, and so you can take these lessons, apply them to yourself, and go out there and make a ton of money. So please share in the comments later how it worked out for you.